welcome back to another video so glad you could join me today and if you're new to the channel thank you for stopping by I hope you stick around for a bit so as I'm sure you've already seen the title to this video is a little different compared to my other ones that's because my sister gave me a really good idea and I'll get into that right now so this video is based off of uh, my last video which I released in the beginning of this month I think it was the 3rd of May anyway and if you want to see uh, that last video is called Tamo Great Beasts and I'll have it linked in the description below so my sister uh, pointed out to me that maybe it will be really fun that I show you something I did in my art prompt video and I thought it would be really fun to show you guys how I drew dragon scales because that's been quite the journey for me when I started doing art and I thought it would be really fun to show you guys how I do it. So as you can see I am just quickly putting down the dragon scales. I'm not making them perfect or symmetrical, each one's a little different to the last and different sized. That's because I don't like making my dragon scales perfect and symmetrical and also round because I find if my scales are round and perfect it's really easy to pick up fault and imperfection because if it's naturally symmetrical then if anything's out of place that will just be the one thing your eye goes to and will pick out immediately. So as you can see my scales technically uh, tend to be on the ragged side and large and small so I just keep my white lines wavy and well very playful we'll put it. <laughs> anyway I'm just pretty busy putting down different sized scales so we can um, have some different varieties. Also, one last thing while I'm drawing the rest of the scales is that if you have watched my Tamer of Great Beast video or you are going to, uh, if there is anything you want me to do a video on that you found really fascinating, just comment down below and I'll see if I'll get around to doing a tutorial on it. I'm always open to discussion and debate. So at the end of this video, if you do see maybe a better way to draw in scales as well, or you've seen just another video, please tell me about it. I am always open to discussion and I think it'll be really fun. Now that I've finished drawing the scales, the first thing I want to do is put in a light source. I will go back and fix this because I wasn't quite happy with how I did this one, but the biggest point is when you're drawing scales or anything that reflects light it's really important to have a light source because you need to be able to tell the difference between where the light's coming from and where the shadows is so your lightest and darkest points so that's what I'm doing so that's what I did right here with the yellow patch and what I'm doing right now is just quickly putting in a base color behind the dragon scales so it's like skin just so I have something to work on that's not completely white and it'll be easier to tell the mid-tone colors from the two lights or the two dots. Also it is also important to do this when you're drawing scales like I've drawn here where they don't completely fit into each other and there are gaps between them you don't really want to leave that open space because well it won't really work in the drawing but also you don't want to make it the same color as your scales because you do want to have the scales look like they're standing up from the skin below so if you do uh, have gaps between your scales uh, the best color to use is just like a really darkish purple if you look closely I'm pretty sure you could, will be able to tell. It's not too bright but not too dark and also you don't want to go to complete black when putting color behind your scales 
because we will go back and shade this later on in the video according to our lights and docks so it just makes the process a lot easier and more realistic if you stay away from black that's just my opinion other people might do it differently so this is just my way of doing it so feel free to experiment and do your own thing when drawing your own scales also I'm quickly gonna go ahead and fill in this color because it takes me a little while and I'll be right back with you when I've finished now that I've finished blocking in the color I am now gonna go ahead and fill in the scales I was going to pick a different color from this blue but I thought I best pick the same color I did in my art prompt Tame of Great Beasts just so you can see how I did the shading in that video too and right now I'm busy going ahead and just um, doing the lighting Just deleting the layer and making a new one. Now the next step is, is that I'm going to select our background layer, the, uh, the pink one, and just lighten it with a dark and light tone. So you can see uh, at the bottom, away from the light source, I made it a little darker. And here, closest to the light source, I made it a tad brighter. And we will also go ahead and do the exact same for the scales. I don't make it too bright or too dark. Uh, you will see why I do this in a little while though. So I am just sectioning the scales and the light sources into three segments. So I can work with those segments individually when layering these scales with colour. So as you see, I've got layer 3 towards the bottom, that's my darkest point. Layer 2, that is my mid-tone, and layer 1 is my lightest point. So these will be the three segments I work with, and I'll explain as I go. So now here comes the tedious part, where I go ahead and layer the scales bit by bit, going from the darkest colour, which I'm getting now, to the lightest point. As you can see here, I'm going towards the darkest point of my drawing and I'm just rounding just below at the bottom of the scales with the darker colour. Don't worry about making the colour too thick because as we go, we will bring that colour up just slightly bit by bit. So it looks like we are going very slowly towards the light source.
I am still working in uh, section three and I'm just about to work, move to section two. So now that I am moving to section two, I just like to bring the darkest color up just a tad because the light in section two is just a tad brighter. So I like to bring my darkest point up just a, just a little bit, just so it's a bit lighter than our dark point in section three. Just so it looks, just so it gives the effect that the sunlight is touching that section a bit more. And then we'll do the same for uh, section one, where we'll bring the darker pigment up just a little bit. This is a bit of a tedious process. I think this took me about half an hour to finish the entire lot. So uh, it gives a really good effect, but it does take a while. So now that I'm moving on to section one, as you can see, I did bring the darkest points up a bit. So they are definitely lighter than, than layer three and layer two. As you can see, now that I've zoomed out, you can already see that raised effect. Now this is the kind of effect you're looking for. So I'm gonna quickly go ahead and just repeat that process. So when you're doing this process, we'll start from the darkest point again, but you want to select the darkest color on that, uh, in that section, and just bring that color up a bit. And we'll do the same for section two and one. You just want to bring that color up just slightly, just so it's a very um, barely noticeable transition, but it's still a transition from the uh, color you first put down. So as you watch, you'll slowly see the colors get brighter and brighter. But you'll still see that the darkest sections will stay dark and the midtones will stay as midtones and the bit closest to the sunlight will still be the brightest section. This took technique took me about a while to come up with. I had no idea how to draw scales just because I really wanted that realistic effect. So this is my technique with doing it. It's probably not the best, but I just wanted to put out there my way of doing it. And well, hopefully it helps you guys with your scales as well.
So we are now just going ahead and adding in the final light sources. It doesn't take much but just a little bit of lighting in the right spots can really make a difference. So I'm just going ahead here and just making sure that the scales that need light have them. Just going ahead and just doing a little fix up. So that's basically how you do scales, that's how I do it anyway. So feel free to go ahead and give it a go yourself. It's not too hard when I'm doing scales. I don't use the airbrush. I just typically use a normal brush, but you can also use the airbrush. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make that a little smaller for you. So earlier I did go ahead and draw up some other scales. You can definitely use this technique on. It doesn't just work with my kind of scales. I was just using this as an example because it's the one I used most. But you can totally use it on all these others or on different kinds of scales. It's not just one type. So feel free going ahead and experimenting. I assure you it will be fun and the result will really be rewarding. Just keep in mind your shadows and lighting. That's just the biggest thing. So this next thing I came up with a little while ago with this latest drawing I was doing is that the black lines that you use to outline your scales, if you ever want to maybe blend those or give them a light source, you could just put the layer lock on so whatever you have selected is the only thing you can draw in. And then as you can see, you can do what I'm doing here. Go ahead and add in the color you would like to mix to your scales. And because that doesn't look blended, I like to go ahead and get the finger blend, which they have on Clip Studio, or just the blur tool, and just go ahead and mix the layers together. As you can see, the black and gold here are blending quite well. They're just merging into each other. So you, you can do this with many colors. You don't have to just do it with the black and another color. You can add in blues, reds, whatever you would like. If you wanted to have your outline of your scales, any other color but black. It's quite helpful and uh, it's quite rewarding as well in the end if it comes out quite well. I actually just figured this technique out a little while ago. I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one that uses it. But I really enjoy this and I'm probably going to use this on some other uh, projects in the future. As you can see here, the gold and the blacks mixed in really smoothly to each other. Uh, also, I probably said this a little while ago, but just remember to put the layer lock in, otherwise this won't really work. I do silly stuff like that all the time. <laughs> it's quite annoying. Anyway, so that's all we've got for today. Uh, this was my technique for drawing scales. I hope you enjoyed it. It was my, this is my first tutorial. So hopefully they will get better in the future. And if you want me to teach anything else I have done in my tutorials, please list it down in the comments below. I would be really interested to hear what you have to say. And also, I am doing another art prompt this month. I did let you guys know in the last video. Just for those of you that don't know, the art prompt is called Swift. And I hope you take part and if you do, it will be on my Instagram which will be linked down below in the description. And well, that's all for now. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and maybe you'll give it a go. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.